Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is a second video on normalization. We are going to use exactly the same data as the previous one. So if you haven't seen the first, it will be linked in the description and you can look at this independently of the previous one. We start with our unnormalized data, that is with a sample of data that we want to understand. We're going to address problems with this data one element at a time. Imagine that you are uh, looking for something you've lost in the grass. If really you need to find your keys, see what I've done here, you're going to be systematic about it. We're going to go through our data looking for specific kind of problems. They are finding a key for every data item. Then if those keys are compound keys, checking that those compound keys are really needed. And finally, if we have found the key, checking that there isn't something else that would be a better key in the groups of data that we have found. Those problems are known as first normal form, second normal form and third normal form problems. Let's go. Problem one, making sure that there is a key for every items of data. And here's our data unnormalized. I've underlined the student number column, but you can see that there are groups of what we call repeating data here. That is, past the first two columns, everything has got multiple items of data for a single student. So the student number cannot possibly work as a primary key for this data. We have a problem with some data with no primary key. So we're going to separate the data that is currently not identified by a key. Let's uh, clean this up a bit and find a primary key for this. But when we separate the two things, we've lost information in losing the link between the first two columns and all the other ones. So we take a copy of the old primary key as a foreign key in our new data set. Now we have two sets of data. One for the data that was originally well identified by the student number and another for the data that needs a different key. We haven't identified what that new key will be. And we choose a primary key for our new table most of the time. It's going to be a compound. Here I need to know both student number and course number. Here is something where I've got the same course number but a different student number and if I didn't have that information then I wouldn't have a key to identify the grade. So we have solved the problem of having a primary key for every data item. Our data is in what we call first normal form. That is there's a primary key for everything. And you could put that into the database system. One of the nice things about working through those first, then second, then third normal form is that you have something that technically can be put into a set of data tables right from the start. Although it's not the best thing that could be put in data tables. Look at the bits I'm highlighting here. We've got the same information repeated twice. Now, repeating information in your database is always a sign of trouble. Imagine that I need to change the name of the teacher for systems analysis. I'm going to have to remember to change it each time it occurs. That's not a good idea. So we have a part of the data where we don't need a compound key. Let me explain that better. The second problem we look at for is problems where you have a compound key but you do not need a compound key for your data. You only need a part of it. And so we look whether the whole key is really needed or not. And here we have four columns in the middle where actually the information does not depend on the student but depends only on the course and the course number. There's a two-part composite key but some of the data does not need this two-part composite, composite key. What do we do when we identify a problem? Cut the data in two. Then, 
I've lost the student number, there it is. Okay. In one part of the data, I've got the course number and everything that depends on the course number. And in the other, I have the grade because the grade depends on both. And so that was the part of the data for which I really need a composite key. Right, here it is cleaned up. Now we only have compound keys where we really need them. We call that the second normal form. Data that is in first normal form, so has a primary key for every table, and only has a compound key if you really have to. We could insert our data into databases this way. But look at the bits that are being highlighted now. Again, we have repeated data. You can see with what's highlighted here that the same teacher always teaches from the same room. And so that data, again, there is some data repeated. And it would be better if that data was away from the rest. Let's try and understand what this is. There is some data that depends not on the primary key, but on something else. Here. What do we do about it? Cut that data apart from the rest, removing it to a new table with a copy of its key. There. Now you have the primary key of teacher, and here the teacher's name has become a foreign key to refer to the teacher's name in the other table. That was the third problem that we look for, nothing but the key. Every column in, in the tables depends on the primary key of that table and not on anything else. We call that the third normal form. Data always has a key, we only use the compound key where we truly need it, and there is no alternative key that we would have better used. Finally, that's a good one to implement. Here's my normalized result. The four tables are now in third normal form. We can see that there is a table indicating courses and their title and who teaches them. The teacher is a cross-reference to the teacher information where there's a teacher's name in their room. Then we see a table of students with their name. And finally here, we have information about which student takes which course and got which grade for that course. Those four tables, they are the same four tables that we have encountered in, in the previous video. I showed what uh, entity relationship model that led to. So here is the model in question. Let's get the relationships in. Each student takes many grades. Each course has many people registered on it. There, there's the four tables in third normal form. So that is a second perspective on how to normalize this, uh, this data, going this time through the first, second and third normal form on the data sample.